and in a short period of time, they've managed to piss off the community and go through over 100 employees in one year. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most controversial kitchen nightmare episodes. You're blind, my friend. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at both the UK and US Gordon Ramsay-led shows for the most shocking moments on and off screen. Who's the best TV chef? Ramsay? Nigella Lawson? Gino DeCampo? Or someone else? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Vegetarian Deceit Gordon Ramsay hasn't always shown vegetarians much respect. In a 2007 interview with the Daily Mirror, he stated, My biggest nightmare would be if the kids ever came up to me and said, Dad, I'm a vegetarian. Then I would sit them on the fence and electrocute them. Yikes. When he showed up at Hertfordshire restaurant La Laterna in 2005, he went to find guinea pigs on the street to try some pizzas. And I bet you're a vegetarian. I am. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right, we have a vegetarian <laughs> pizza. One turned out to be a vegetarian for the past eight years. However, the vegetarian pizza he sampled contained Parma ham. Oh, no. What I didn't realise was that Aldona put Parma ham on the base of her mozzarella and tomato pizza. While Ramsay didn't know this at the beginning, he soon found it hilarious, as did the restaurant's chefs. <laughs> It's Palmer Ham. Oh no, that was me. The vegetarian couldn't get away quick enough. I'll see you Thank you, Thanks. Cheers. Take care. Good luck with the Vegemite. Number nine, Ramsey swearing. Whenever you see Ramsey on screen, you always expect him to do two things. One, he'll insult people by making them call themselves an idiot sandwich. Two, lots and lots of swearing. It's bland, it's stale and it's packed with grease. Back in 2009, the audience couldn't believe the amount of cursing from Ramsay and the ones he was helping when he visited the Runaway Girl and the Dove Court restaurants. There were 115 variations of the F word used. I'm surprised you haven't killed off half the population in Oakhampton. In less than two minutes, there were 30 examples. Ofcom received 51 official complaints about the episode's language. It's not just the UK audience that was shocked. In 2008, Australian viewers reportedly demanded changes to the law to curb decency rules after hearing the F word 80 times in one episode. That embarrassing. Number 8. Sick in Bonaparte. In the first ever episode of Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares in 2004, Ramsay popped to Yorkshire to visit Bonaparte. With a head chef at only 21 years of age, Ramsay quickly worked out what the problem was when he asked the chef to make his signature dish involving scallops. As Ramsay took a bite, he soon realised he was served a rotten scallop and began throwing up outside. It's got to be sick. <coughs> He's only gone and given me a rancid scallop. Later on, the Scottish chef went down with food poisoning. Not great. I'm now starting to shit myself. Afterwards, Evening Standard TV reviewer Victor Lewis Smith claimed Ramsay had misled the audience by making the restaurant look worse than it was. So, Ramsay took them to court for libel. The Evening Standard had to pay Ramsay £75,000 in damages and print an apology. I could kill someone. That's the bottom line. Number 7. Café Hun. Imagine the town you live in has a particular word they all use and love. Then someone comes along and trademarks that word, claiming it as their own. Well, that's exactly what happened in Baltimore with Denise Whiting and her restaurant, Café Hun. She trademarked the restaurant name and the word Hun, the shortening for honey. She not only trademarked Café Hun, but the word Hun as well. The locals turned on her quickly for this act with protests against the restaurant, which caused her business to tank. This left Whiting angry and defensive, which further hindered Café Hun. I have people scream at me from across the street, just horrible things. So Ramsay came in with Kitchen Nightmares in 2012 to help. He got Whiting to relinquish the trademark and began building bridges with the locals. 
So, all's well that ends well. Please forgive me. Number six, nicknames for all. One of the most infamous sites that Kitchen Nightmares visited was New York's Black Pearl in 2008. Everyone at the restaurant got a nickname. David was called the Prince of Darkness and Sleepy, while Greg and Brian got Grumpy and Dopey. Basically, in a nutshell, Sleepy, Dopey and Grumpy. Who am I? Snow right? But after the show aired is when the drama kicks in. In an open letter, the owners called Ramsay a jerk wished for his demise and slated Ramsay's attempts to save their restaurant. What did he say after I left? I guess you left a bad taste in his mouth, but nobody likes being told that they're wrong. They claimed his changes caused negative press and a massive 50% fall in their revenue. They even claimed the diners that came in for the grand reopening were all actors from Craigslist. The Black Pearl ended up closing down a month after the episode aired. The Black Pearl is closed. Kaput. Finished. Number 5. Suing Manager When Ramsey turned up at New York's Dillon's in 2007, he and general manager Martin Hyde didn't see eye to eye. Ramsey saw the place as a toxic waste hazard, while Hyde didn't seem at all bothered. Is this how you run a place? No, I don't, I don't run a place like this, all right? In the end, Hyde walked away from the restaurant before he was sacked by the owner. In the aftermath, Ramsey was sued by Hyde. He claimed that Ramsey and the show manipulated how the restaurant was to make it look worse. I you to guilty. come on board. I'm glad. Not guilty, Mohammed. I'm not guilty. Even bringing in actors to pretend to be diners. Hyde's team requested that the episode be banned from airing and a whopping $1 million in damages. Not long after news broke about the papers being filed, a judge threw the suit out. Obviously, uh, Martin didn't come back. No. Number four, firing customers. In 2011, Ramsey and the Kitchen Nightmare team arrived in Rhode Island to help Down City, and the Hell's Kitchen chef had his work cut out with co-owner and manager Abby Cabral. Abby, you've got to understand how frustrating this is. It's ridiculous. Originally, Cabral and her business partner Rico Conforti bought the restaurant in 2005 and were raking in cash, but not long after, the wheels came off and Cabral was a big reason why, with her very defensive ways. She wouldn't take any criticism, even firing customers when they complained about the food Cabral claimed was 10 out of 10. I think you're one of those customers that I would fire immediately. Yeah. You fire customers? She also directed her ire towards her own employees. After the episode aired, by the end of the year, Down City went out of business. You are so in denial, you need therapy! Number 3. Chef Passing In the first season of Kitchen Nightmares, Ramsey visited Campania in New Jersey in 2007. The laid-back owner and head chef, Joseph Serniglia, was struggling with massive debts as Campania tried to stay open. After the episode, Serniglia spoke positively of his experiences on the show. Good luck. Thanks. Meatball. Uh, good luck. Take care. And that was clear to see when Ramsey revisited the eatery in 2008 and heaped praise on its condition. Ramsey stated during the first episode that Sir Niglia's business was about to swim down the Hudson. Your business is about to swim down the Hudson. By 2010, those haunting words sadly came into play when Sir Niglia took his own life when he jumped from the George Washington Bridge. Number 2. Yelp Attacks Taking money from your son's inheritance from his grandfather to start a restaurant is a tad immoral. Scratch that. Really, really immoral. And that's exactly what Daniel's father, Alan, did to open Burger Kitchen. There was money in a trust account and my dad took 250000 of my money to put it into this restaurant. It didn't go well. In 2011, Alan was in massive denial about the state of his establishment, going so far to claim there was a conspiracy of Yelp users posting terrible reviews to put him out of business. Yelp has killed us. One Yelp user said that Alan threatened her with turning her over to the hate crime division of the LAPD. The mess of the restaurant was so big that it took two episodes to fix. Yet, it's still later closed down. 
You have to stop caring about Yelp. He's trying to get you off of this shit, man. Number one, the saga of Amy's Baking Company. Amy's Baking Company is probably the most iconic restaurant in the series, just due to the insanity alone. The owners, Sammy and Amy, were in extreme denial about their eatery. They would verbally berate their customers if they complained. Even in the first episode, which aired in 2013, Sammy nearly fought a customer. By the end, Ramsey realises they aren't open to change. So, he leaves and doesn't fix their mess. And the right thing for me is to get out of here. Good luck. After the reaction to the episode, the owners exploded on Facebook with an all caps rant attacking users on Yelp, Reddit and basically anyone. You need thick skin in this business. Well, they can't, they can't be crazy Amy B. The owners then claimed they were hacked and they weren't responsible for those messages. Sure, Amy's baking company eventually, and probably not surprisingly, closed in 2015. Yeah. That we're psychotic he killed you already. The way that they he killed you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.